Hello, my name is Jayla Demery. I'm a senior at Cedar Ridge High School and a member of the student ministry here at OWBC. On behalf of our senior pastor, Samuel L. Bull Sr., and the entire One Way family, we welcome you to What's on the Agenda and News You Can Use for through September 1st, 2022. Prayer requests. The August prayer request booklets are available in the church foyer. Prayer is the forerunner to God's mercies. Please pray for those in need and watch God pour his mercies over them and yourself. We will pick you up. The church van is available to pick you up for the Sunday worship experience. If you need a ride, please contact the church office no later than Thursday noon for pickup on the following Sunday. The church hours are Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. through 3.30 p.m. Success takes every person with a unified purpose. Each member is asked to give an additional $25 per week minimum towards the Step Up commitments. Please remember to use the green envelope for your gifts during the worship experience. Or, for online giving, please select the Step Up Commitment option. All members, Pastor Bull is inviting you to become a part of a ministry here at OWBC. There is a place for you. If you are a member, you are encouraged to please find your place in the ministry so you may grow in the Lord and help build the kingdom of God. Leaders, mark your calendars. A ministry leaders meeting is scheduled for Monday, September 12th at 6 p.m. His Temple Health Ministry, Health Matters, August 26, 2022. August is Children's Eye Health and Safety Month. Your child's eyesight and visual development will go through many changes beginning at birth. You and your pediatrician will monitor these vision milestones as they grow from infant to toddler to school age. Although these developments occur at different pace for each child, here are some ways to ensure your child's eye health is on target. Visual engagement, give your child time to focus on things around them when in new environments and approach objects from all angles to get your child comfortable with a wider field of vision. Playing games such as peekaboo and patty cake can help stimulate eye-hand coordination for babies the same way a game of catch can do with your toddler or school-aged child. Balanced diet, vitamins A, C, and E have been found to be beneficial to eye health. It is also important to remember that a healthy diet can help prevent conditions such as obesity and hypertension which have been linked to additional eye diseases. Protection. Protect eyes with appropriate eyewear. Wear sunglasses when outside for long periods of time. Limit the use of digital screens. As digital learning becomes more common, screens from computers, tablets, and mobile phones are more present in the lives of children more than ever. 
Keep screens 18 to 24 inches from eyes and set daily limits on the amount of time spent on these devices. Look out for these warning signs. Squinting, head tilting, holding objects very close to the eyes, eye rubbing, sensitivity to light, poor hand-eye coordination, no interest in reading or viewing distinct objects. Most important, get regular eye exams. Our thought for the week, better eyes for better life. Come back next month for more Health Matters from His Temple Health Ministry. Church office hours, Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The phone number is 512-238-6922. Greetings and blessings to you, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends. I wanted to come on here and personally invite you to attend in-house after COVID Facts Bible Study on 1st, 2nd, 4th, and 5th Wednesdays of every month, unless something comes up. If you really want to see OWBC continue to grow in the Lord, I want to encourage you to come learn and fellowship and hear what God has to say to us as a family. Remember what the facts are. F, faithful to God. A, available for God. C, consistent in the ministry of God. T, teachable from the word of God. And S, submissive to the will of God. I will be looking forward to seeing you in the sanctuary each Wednesday. I love you. Be encouraged. Remain safe. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Wednesday Bible Studies, August 31st. As Pastor has stated, After COVID Facts begins at 6.30. Also, the student ministry will meet at 6.30 p.m. Thursday Morning Bible Study, September 1st. GPS, God's Precious Seniors, with Pastor Emeritus Bernard Buell, will meet at 10 a.m. Sunday Worship Experience. We invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for a one-way worship experience. You may join us via social media on our Facebook and YouTube pages. But we would love to have you join us in person for the full worship experience. If you have been fully vaccinated, including your booster, and are comfortable, wearing your mask is optional. However, everyone, Please use the hand sanitizer provided before entering the sanctuary. We look forward to worshiping with each of you on this Sunday. And our thought for the week. God will give us mountaintop experiences, but we have to first learn to trust Him in the valleys. Have an abundantly blessed week, and from the desk of our Pastor Bull, don't let the devil steal your joy.
Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said in his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show us mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies mm -hmm. and enable us to serve him without fear. Mm -hmm. May God bless the leaders here to do us in this holy Amen. Amen.
Put your hands together. You know we serve a big king. God is worthy of the praise.
so good, so kind, so merciful unto us. We realize that God, if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we'd be today. We bless your name this morning for being so merciful unto us. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for our last night's lying down and our early rising this morning. Thank you for allowing us to see a day that we've never seen in one we'll never see again. We say thank you for blessing us throughout this entire week. Thank you to God for life, health, and strength. Thank you for a reasonable portion of our minds, dear God. We thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you for our good days. We thank you for our bad days. We thank you for our happy days. We thank you for our sad days. God, we just thank you for being so good to us. Yes, yes, God, and we we bathe in your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We magnify your Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that he's here today. God, I pray that you would bless this word that you've deposited into us you divinely deposited into us and I pray that your word will go forth open the hearts the minds the ears of your people to receive your word thank you for this music ministry that set the atmosphere this morning to God we thank you for your anointing over this music ministry and we realize that God the best is still yet to come move in a special way continue to minister to the hearts of your people through your Holy Spirit hide me behind the cross that they see hear none of me but all of thee dear God let your word go forth don't let us leave here the same way we came let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O oh Lord my strength and my redeemer we love you God we love you because you've been so good you look beyond our faults. You look right at our faults. Supplied us with our need and therefore we say thank you. Hear our prayer, hear our call. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said amen. Put your hands together and give the Lord a big old hand of praise. Thank you, Minister Rory. Thank you, thank you. Music ministry. Give them another good God bless you. They blessed us this morning. I want to lift a passage of scripture with you this morning in our second message of our three-part series, Trusting God. Open your Bibles to the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 8. While you find that, let me express my thanks to our ministers, NGL and Grantham their wives, our deacons, deaconesses, ministry leaders, GPS, student ministry, ushers, mighty music ministry, minister music, drummer, BSL, safety, greeters, our Facebook family, YouTube, and friends. You my heavenly father's children. I got a lot to say, so I'm trying to get, already trying to get across the field. Amen, amen. So, the book of Joshua, chapter uh, 1, commence reading at verse one and concluding at verse number eight. I will be reading from the New International Translation of the Bible. When you have it, these words are recorded. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. 
Now then, you and all of these people get ready to cross the Jordan River to the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book, eighth and final verse, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything within it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth thereof, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. I want to preach this morning with your prayers and needing God's power from these words, how to get your blessing and be successful. How to get your blessing and be successful. Thank you so much, ushers. The thematic emphasis of this sermonic presentation is to get us to a point of trust and dependency on God in every area of our lives. Last Sunday, this Sunday, next Sunday, I want us to get to the point that we are totally dependent upon God in every aspect of our lives. Because the one thing all of us have in common is a desire to reach a level of of success. However, we individually defined it, I feel that all of us want to be successful. Whether we define success by some material, spiritual, political, or social measurement, it is my estimation that each and every one of us, regardless of how old or how young we are, whether we are spiritual, carnal, saved, or unsaved, all of us desire to be considered by ourselves and others as a successful person. And I know this to be true because there's always some kind of book dealing with some success. How to be successful in our marriage how to be successful as a leader, how to be successful in a relationship, right. how to invest successfully. Uh -huh. yeah. There's a plethora of periodicals that have been penned and published by people that's given us advice on how to be successful. Right. And I have no problem, brothers and sisters, with any book or article concerning how to be successful, but I've come to the understanding that if you really want to be blessed and successful, all you really have to do is just read the Bible. All right, come on, all right. Because in every area of your life, the Bible gives us 
instructions on how to do it. If you want to have blessed and successful children or be a blessed and successful parent, Proverbs 22 and 6 says, just train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. You want to you want to have a blessed and successful marriage? Just read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Ladies, says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands. Here it is, as unto the Lord. Drop down to verse 25. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself a ransom for it. If you want to be blessed and successful in your finances, read the Bible. I just told you last week, Malachi says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 in the NIV, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Tell me in this, says the Lord Almighty. He says, test me and, and see if I will not Throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. If, 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 if you want to be a blessed and successful leader or even have a really blessed and successful church, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, All we have to be is his people who are called by his name, humbling ourselves, praying, seeking his face, turning from our wicked ways. Everything else will take care of itself. God will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sins, and he will heal our land. All of these blessed principles are found in the Bible. Now, I mentioned blessed and successful brothers and sisters because it is the canvas upon which I, this text is painted on today. All right. At the time of our writing in verse number one, Joshua is the newly called and installed pastor of this congregation. All right. yeah. And the first thing God wants him to know is he wants him to be blessed. And he can be, and let, just let me put a quarter in this meeting pocket just for one moment. Let me tell you something. God desires each and every one of us to be successful. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God desires you to be successful. You, you got to hear this today, church. God desires for you to be successful in whatever you do. God desires you to prosper. You remember Psalm 1? God has blessed you to prosper. He wants you to prosper. Whatever business, whatever you venture to do, whatever dream you dream, whatever thought you have, you have to understand that God's desire for you is to prosper. God wants you to be a success. His name is at stake. There's some things that God will do because his name is on the line. God could have wiped you out a long time ago, but his name is attached to you. There's some blessing that God will release into your life, even though we don't deserve it. Because his name is on the line. There, there's some things God uh, will do for his name's sake. Somebody ought to help me preach here. We, we ought to just praise God for that. Because God desires you to prosper. Brother and sisters, this is not a prosperity message, but it is a message about being blessed and successful. God wants you to be the head and not the tail. All right. This is not some spiritual colloquialism. Uh, I'm just saying uh, to you to get you all pumped up. God, I really believe this in the fabric of my soul. God really desires you to be blessed in every walk of your life. Anything your hands find to do, God desires it to be blessed. Not because you are the Midas touch, but because you got his touch. 
God wants you to be blessed. And when you read chapter number one, God wanted Joshua to know that uh, it was his desire for him to be blessed and successful. And reading verse 1 through 9, he wanted Joshua to know about two things. The perks of blessings and success and the prerequisite for blessings and success. In the first five verses, you still have your Bibles open, don't you? Of chapter number 1, he talks about the perks of blessings. And success. And I want to encourage somebody this morning because when it, whenever God ordains you to be blessed and successful, yeah. there are some perks. Yeah. There are some benefits. Yeah. That's, that, that's why you don't have to steal. Yeah. Help me hear somebody. You don't have to sleep around. You don't have to brown nose. You don't have to uh, 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 ingratiate yourself into the life of other people. Whenever God decides it's your time to be blessed, there are some perks. When you read the first five verses, he promises some perks to Joshua. He wants Joshua to know that one of the perks of God's blessing him and making him a success was, here it is, the Lord can move him beyond the present. We read verse number one, it declares that Moses, the servant of the Lord, had died. Is that in your Bible? And for those of you that are not familiar with this story, the Bible says in the last chapter, in Deuteronomy chapter number 34, that the children of Israel are not taking the death of Moses very well. Verse 8 says that they wept for Moses in the plain of Moab for 30 days. So instead of making progress toward the promised land, they are parked in the plains of Moab. They are mourning the loss of the last leader for 30 days. Instead of advancing toward the destination where God desired them to be. For 30 days. They are crying uncontrollably because God has taken from them somebody that was so incredibly important to their history and their heritage. You got to understand who Moses was. You got to understand what he meant to these Israelites. He was their litigator. He was their legislator. And he was their liberator. He, he was the one that liberated them from Egypt. He, he was the, the litigator. He was the one that talked to God on their behalf and who God talked to on their behalf. Yeah. He was their legislator. He was the one that God gave the law to for the children of Israel to obey. Right. Look at who God had taken from their, their life. Moses was the only leader. He was the some of those only People, the only leader, he was the only individual they knew. Moses was their everything. Yeah. However, Moses had taken them as far as God allowed him to take them. Right. Moses was a good man. Moses wasn't a bad influence, but Moses had reached his purpose. God had ordained these people to go to another level without Moses' influence. So it was God's decision to take Moses out of the life of the children of Israel. And for 30 days, they felt as if they cannot get beyond the decision of God. For 30 days. They felt they cannot get beyond this sorrow, get beyond this pain. For 30 days, they feel they cannot move beyond the misery of this moment. For 30 days, they are crying uncontrollably. 30 days, they feel as if they're destined to be stuck at a point of depression. However, God decided that it was Joshua's time to be blessed and successful. My brother and sisters, whenever God blesses you, he can move you beyond where you are and take you to a place that you've never been before. God speaks to Joshua in verse 1 and says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people, get up. 
get ready to cross the Jordan into a land I'm about to give them the Israelites. God tells Joshua, you have to understand that when I ordain you to be blessed, I can move you beyond the moment where you are now. Take you someplace where you've never been before. Can I encourage somebody this morning? God is telling me to tell you that because it's your time to be successful, get ready to move beyond where you are right now. Right. To a place that you've never been before. I wish I had some help up here today. No matter how difficult it has been these past couple of years, whenever God decides it's your time to be successful, that's wherever you are and how long you've been there, it really don't make any difference. God says it's time for you to move. What you have to do, brothers and sisters, you have to get over the fact that God has taken some things and some people out of your life. Let me just say this to you. Stop trying to hold on what God already let go. Stop trying to resurrect the stuff God already caused to be dead. Stop trying to take folk with you that God didn't ordain to be a part of your final destination. So God tells Joshua, the moment I decide for you to be successful, you can move forward beyond the present. Look at your neighbor and tell him, get a good look at me now. Because where I am today may not be here next week. In fact, you may not even recognize me next week. I may be moved into a different realm. Because I'm just too blessed to stay where I am. I've got too much going on for me to stay right where I am. I know I cried 30 days. I've had my lament moment. I've had my sorrow moment. I've had my private little pity party. But the Lord has spoken to me and told me that success and blessing is in my future. Brothers and sisters, the first perk of being blessed is I'm packing my bag and I'm moving on. I'm at the point now, brothers and sisters, I'm so secure in my travel destination. If you don't want to go, if you want to stay parked here in the plains of Moab and cry about how bad things are and how rough things are and what happened to you when you was a child and you're grown, you're full grown now, you stay right there and have your private pity party. But as for me and me, I'm not talking about my house. I'm talking about me and me. I'm getting my stuff and I'm moving where the Lord would have me to go. Look at your neighbor telling him it's time to move. So, 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 so he lets them know that the perk of success is, number one, moving you beyond the present. Now watch this, look at verse 3. He lets Joshua know that the next perk is the Lord is manifesting his promises. The Lord is manifesting his promises. Look, he said in verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have already given it to you. Church folk on the window. He said, I made you some promises. And the promise he made to Joshua was, there's favor in your footsteps. No matter where you go, no matter what you walk on, I've already ordained for you to have it. If you're big enough to believe it, I'm bad enough to perform it. All you have to do is have enough faith to start walking around it. Now I know some of y'all are really not receiving this literally. But I want to talk to those, the ones here that, that are receiving this word this morning. You need to start walking around your family. Walk around your house. Walk around your bills because you believe that by faith, there's favor in your footsteps. And if I'm talking to anybody here today who know that God will give you favor enough to walk on top of some stuff and claim some stuff and can manifest some promises can give you God can give you a praise in your lips because wherever 
My brothers and sisters, God says he's going to do something for you. Whenever God says I'm going to come through, whenever God says I'm going to manifest, it's just a matter of time. I don't care what the economy does. I don't care how high gas gets. I don't care how high beef becomes. I don't care how high groceries get. I don't care who controls the house, who controls the Senate, who controls the White House. I don't care who's the president. I don't care what the stock market does. When God said, I'm going to manifest, you need to get ready. This morning, I'm declaring and decreeing that God is getting ready to manifest some stuff here at OWBC. That God's getting ready to blow our minds. He's going to pour out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive them. And if you think we had some haters before, if you thought people didn't like you before, if you thought they talked about you, wait until the manifestation. God says every place Somebody shout every place. The sole of your foot shall walk on. I've already given it to you. So my brother and sister, ladies and gentlemen, when you start walking around that situation, when you start walking around your children, your job, when you start walking around your home, your husband, your wife, your illness, when you start walking around, you need to start giving God praise. Not for what God has already done, but praise him by faith for what he, you believe in he's getting ready to do. Is there anybody here this morning who can give God some praise? Because you believe that God is, is, is going to knock down some stuff? Just like he did for Joshua around the walls of Jericho? Walls that's been blocking your blessings, walls that's been stopping your healing, walls that's been keeping you up at night, walls that's been making you cry, walls that's been stealing your joy, walls that's been hindering your walk with God. You got to believe that walls will come down. He told, he told, he told Joshua in verse 1. That you'll be able to move beyond the present. In verse 3 he says, God will manifest his promises. Then he said the third part is in verse number 5. The Lord tells Joshua, I'm giving you might against people. He says, I'm giving you so much might. Look what he says. That there shall not be any man that stand before thee all the days of your life. He says that no weapon that is formed against you is going to be able to prosper. <clears throat> he says people will rise up against you. But everybody that rise up against you will fall. There are people that despise the ground you walk on. They will look you in the face and lie in your face. When God has given you the victory, folk can spread rumors. They can lie. They can steal. They, they can try and steal your joy, try to mess up your relationship. But if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you because he's giving you might against people. Now God spends the five, first five verses talking about the perks. And I praise God for the perks. But none of those perks mean anything if I don't do the prerequisites. So all that hollering we just did, all that praising we just did about the perks mean absolutely nothing if we can't follow the prerequisites. Let me share with you the prerequisites because God knows I want the perks. The text this morning is about three things. Receive, run, and rehearse. Write that down, write that down. 
receive, run, and rehearse. And let me unpack this text right quick. I know y'all thought I was unpacking it, but I wouldn't. <laughs> let me let you go so you can go get you some. He says, if you want to know how to get your blessing and be successful, right. look at verse 6. You have to, number one, receive my power. Somebody shout, receive, receive. My, power. my power. He says in verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers. Verse 6, he says, watch this, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, he says, be strong and courageous. Verse 9, he says, have not I commanded you to be strong and courageous. I'll tell y'all, oh Lord have mercy, y'all going to make me work for it today. Verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, he says, be strong and very courageous. Verse 9, he says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Now y'all ready to help me. Now I'm about to get across the field. The Lord tells Joshua, be strong. That word, be strong in the Hebrew means to dominate. It means to conquer. It means to take authority. The Lord tells Joshua, conquer, dominate, take authority. Let me say that slow. He tells Joshua, conquer, take authority, dominate. I'll try it one more time. Three times he tells Joshua, conquer. Take authority. Dominate. He says, I didn't spare you for you not to conquer. Take authority. Dominate. You've been through too much to live a defeated life. God says, I've invested too much in you. You got to conquer. I called you to conquer. I've authorized you to take authority. I put something inside of you that will not allow you to be a spiritual punching bag. Because there's a conqueror on the inside of you. Tell your neighbor, you got to conquer. God didn't spare you from what he spared you of. He didn't bring you out of what he brought you out of. He didn't deliver you out of what you were in for you to just go through life not being a conqueror. But he tells Joshua, Joshua, your assignment is to conquer. It's to dominate. It is to take authority. Now here, brothers and sisters, is where it gets very interesting. Because the verb, watch this, be strong, is in the imperative mood. And the imperative mood Mood means he's not making a suggestion. He's not encouraging him to conquer. He's not encouraging him to dominate. He's not just throwing it out there that he takes authority. He's telling Joshua, you better conquer. You better dominate. You better take authority. He's telling Joshua, I've been too good to you for you not to conquer and dominate and take authority. I've seen you through many seen and unseen dangers. For you not to, anybody going to help me here this morning? Not to conquer. God has been too good to some of you under the sound of my voice for you to sit back and let the devil just run through your family. Take authority over your children. Take authority over your marriage. God is telling me to tell you, you better stop having those pity parties and you better conquer, you better dominate, and you better take authority. Because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
It's, it's, it's in the imperative mood. But on top of it being in the imperative mood, it's in what's called the active voice. And the active voice means that the subject is performing the action. That means God is telling Joshua, you be strong. You have to do those things that are necessary to make yourself strong. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. God is telling Joshua, you just can't rely on me, but you have to watch this. Position yourself so that I can pour into you. My brothers and sisters, there's some things that you have to do. You just can't sit back because you'll never be able to conquer by yourself. You'll never be able to dominate in your own power and in your own might. But if you position yourself in such a way that God can allow you to receive his power. Then you'll be able to stand up against the devil. Somebody listen to me. The only reason why you haven't given up because you have received another source of power. You receive this strength in your weakest hour. You receive his might. And the Lord wants you to know that the only way you can be blessed and successful is you have got to receive his power. Yeah. Then he said, after you receive my power, he tells Joshua, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. That's right. He said, don't turn from it to the right or to the left. That you may be successful. Watch this. Wherever you go. He tells Joshua, after you receive my power, number two, he said, run my play. Run my play. Somebody shout, run my play. In other words, do what I tell you to do. Like I told you to do it. Don't turn from the left. Don't turn from the right. Just do it the way I told you to do it. Now, now those of you that are familiar with football, every football team have plays that they run. There was a play for every situation. Some teams have over 15, 2,000 plays. The coach sends in the play to the quarterback. Sometimes the play, that's what they run. Sometimes it's not the play that the coach calls. And so in those instances, brothers and sisters, the coach calls a play, but the quarterback is not running that play. What happens is the quarterback calls what is called an audible. And he changes the play. I'm going somewhere with this. And he runs a play that the coach was not, that has not called. So the question is, what would make a quarterback defy a head coach and call a play that the coach didn't call? I'm glad you asked. Sometimes the quarterback is not seeing what the coach sees. There are times that the coach is seeing something that the quarterback doesn't see. And the coach calls a play based on uh, what he sees. And the quarterback gets to the line and sees something totally different. And because the quarterback's vision is not in tune with the coach's vision, the quarterback changed the play. So my question to you, my brothers and sisters this morning is, how many times has the Lord called a play for our lives? And because we didn't see it the way the Lord sees it, we called an audible and changed the play. The Lord tells us to do it this way, like this. The Lord sends the, us down this route, this path, and we decide we're going to change the play. Because we don't see it the way God sees it. But you have to understand that God doesn't see things like us. And somebody ought to shout right there, praise the Lord. The way that you are looking at the field, he's just not looking at the line, brothers and sisters. He's looking at the whole field. 
And you have to know that God is not looking at your line. He's looking at the, your entire life. And if God calls a play for you, if God tells you to go to a certain place, if God tells you to say a certain thing, if God tells you to stay in a certain place, you have to trust God. That even though you feel it's not going to work, you have to believe that the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord. You have to get to the point that you trust God. Look at your neighbor, tell him, trust God. You have to get to the point, brothers, even though it looks bad because his ways and his thoughts are not like ours, you've got to learn how to run his play. Sometimes the quarterback calls an audible just because he doesn't like to play. All right. Sometimes the quarterback feels he knows just as much uh -huh. as the coach knows. He calls a different play because yeah. he feels as if he knows what he's doing. I'm going to come get you in just a minute. How many times have we said, Lord, I got this. I can handle this. Lord, I know what I'm doing. But if you can be honest, the times when you made the biggest mistake in your life, what time when you were trying to do it your way? Do I have a witness here today? Can you admit times uh, when it didn't work out like you thought it should work out? It was the time when you decided you were going to change the play. Just because you didn't like where the Lord was sending you. You didn't like where you were working. You didn't like who you were sitting by. You didn't like uh, where God had you. You didn't like how it was feeling. You didn't like suffering. You didn't like crying. You didn't like the pain. I'm coming to get you. You, you, you decided you were going to change the play. But God told me to tell you, stop trying to change the play. If you want to get your blessing and be successful, run my play. I'm getting across the field here. You want to know how to get your blessing? Be successful? There are some prerequisites. He says that you must first receive my power. Secondly, run my play. Then finally he says if you want to get your blessing and be successful, you need to rehearse my plan. Rehearse my plan. He tells Joshua in verse 8. He says, don't let this book of the law leave your mouth. Here it is. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. He says, and if you do, then you will be prosperous and successful. Don't let this book depart from your mouth. Watch this. But meditate on it. Rehearse it. Somebody shout rehearse it. Keep talking about it day in and day out so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in the book. Uh, this way you can be prosperous and successful. Don't let the book, don't let the book, don't let the book depart from your mouth. In other words, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Meditate on the book day and night. Rehearse his plan. Keep talking about it. Keep reminding yourself of what the Lord's plans are for your life. Keep talking to yourself. Keep reminding yourself that God is a way maker. Uh, keep reminding yourself of what his plans are for your life. Keep reminding yourself. Keep rehearsing that he didn't bring you this far to just leave you. Keep rehearsing it. Keep reminding yourself. Can I tell you why? Because the devil's biggest weapon is not death. The devil's biggest weapon is not disease. 
The devil's biggest weapon is not demons. The devil's biggest weapon and most effective weapon is the spirit of doubt. The devil tries to make us doubt whether God is going to come through on our behalf. If you don't believe me, just go back into the book of Genesis. The first time that we see the serpent, the devil in the Bible, he's having a conversation with Eve. And he got to Adam and Eve because he made Eve doubt what God said, what he said. Do I have a witness here? He made Eve doubt what God was going to do, what God said he was going to do. That's what the devil does to us, brothers and sisters. The devil tries to make us doubt. The biggest and the baddest and the most uh, awesome weapon that the devil have is doubt. The devil can make you doubt God and the devil can make you have a relapse in your faith. If the devil can make you feel as if God is not going to come through, if the devil can make you feel that God is not going to do what he said, brothers and sisters, the devil has done what he needs to do. Do I have a witness here? Uh, and what you need to do to counteract that doubt is by rehearsing in your mind that God is going to do everything that he said he was going to do. That's why he tells Joshua, you have to rehearse my plan. You have to meditate on it. You, you have to constantly remind yourself that God is going to work it out. Everything in the law. You have to remind yourself that God is going to come through. Have I got a witness here? Uh, you have to remind yourself uh, that God is going to come through because there will become some times when you are surrounded by the enemy. There will be times when your mountains are high and your valleys are low. There will be times when you will have to cry. Yes, Lord, there will be times when you will be up all night long worrying about this and worrying about that. I feel my help coming now. There will be times when your clouds will get dark. There will be times when your money will be funny and your change will be strange and your check will be in a wreck have I got a witness here there will be times when your children will be challenging you there will be times when the termites of time will start tearing at your temple. There will be times when it feels as if your whole world has been turned upside down. And when such times happen, it is at those times that you must have a flashback in your mind and start rehearsing certain things to yourself. You have to go into a period of rehearsal and you have to remind yourself that God told you that you are a conqueror. Have I got a witness here? You have to remind yourself that God has ordained your life to be more than what it is right now. Somebody under the sound of my voice, your friends are wondering, how is it that you haven't thrown in the towel? How is it that you still have joy? How is it? that you are still in your right mind how is it that after all the stuff you've been through you can still walk on the job roll your shoulders back up keep your head lifted up how is it that in spite of what you've been going through you are still optimistic that all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord. Your friends are looking at you trying to figure out because they know what you've been going through. They know 
how rough it's been. They know how hard it's been. They know that you've been down. They know that your hours have been cut back. They know that you're working part time. They know that your children have been in trouble. They know that your spouse has been sick. They know that your mother's been sick. They know that your father's been sick. But they see you acting in such a manner that contradicts your context. And they can't figure out uh, how is it that uh, you still have joy. Uh, they can't figure out uh, how is it that uh, every time they see you, uh, you got a smile on your face uh, in spite of what you're going through. Uh, well, uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, what they don't know is uh, you had rehearsal. Did you hear what I said? And you've been in rehearsal. And in your quiet time, you've been rehearsing. You crept in your closet. And in your closet time, you've been rehearsing. They don't understand. Driving in your car, you just rehearsing. They don't understand. When you're all by yourself, you are rehearsing. When you're coming home by yourself in your car, you don't have the cell phone on, you don't have the radio on, but you're talking not to your friends, but you're talking to yourself because you are rehearsing the promises of God. You're telling yourself, I gave my tithe, I gave my offering, and according to his word, God told me, God told me he was going to break open the floodgates of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I won't have room to receive it. You're rehearsing. You're still telling yourself, since I'm abiding in him and his word abiding in me, Anything I ask of God and based on his word, I'm expecting to receive it. What I ask God for, you're rehearsing some stuff. up. You're telling yourself, I'm his people. I've been called by his name. I'm seeking his face. I'm turning. I'm turning. Oh, turning. Turning. Turning from my wicked ways. Did you hear what I said? And I'm believing by faith that God will heal my land. I feel pretty good here now. Yes, Lord, and forgive my sins. You're rehearsing. You're telling yourself that blessings are in my future. And I'm going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the fields. I'm rehearsing. And because I've rehearsed his plan and because I have ran his play and because I have received his power, I'm believing that trouble, yes, Lord, don't last always. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I know that you know that it's been kind of rough. I know that you know I've been struggling. I know that you know I've had hard times. But what you don't know is God promised me, I said God promised me that he was going to turn it around. God told me that he was going to bless me. And I got good news. I said I got good news. I said I got good news. I declare and decree that from this point on until the rest of my life I will walk in my blessing and my success. I'm going to preach in my blessing and my success. I'm going to live in my blessing and my success. I declare and decree from this day forward for the rest of my life I still may have to cry, but I shall be blessed. I still may fall down, but I shall be blessed. I still may be sick, but I will be blessed. I will 
will be blessed. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I've had my last moment of failure. I've had my last moment of disappointment. I've had my last setback from this day forward. From this day forward, I declare over my life, over my children, my family, my church, that we will be a success. Did you hear what I said? How do I know? Because I found somebody to pattern my life after. I found somebody to look at who was successful. He was successful. He came to his own and his own received him not. He would lie to own, criticize, scandalize, hung, bled, and died, buried, but he still was a success. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus. And because he is a success, I declare marriages successful. I declare businesses successful. I declare families successful. Pat yourself on the chest and say from this day forward, I will be a success because God is a my company keeper. I'm blessed today because God heals my soul saver. God heals my peace giver. God heals my bill payer. God heals my body healer. God heals my pain killer. God heals my grocery buyer. God heals my discount giver. My crack destroyer. My heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. He's a head lifter. He's a body and raise him. He's a dead counselor. He's a problem solver. He's a marriage counselor. He's a devil driver. He's a hellhound chaser. He's a dead raiser. He's a light giver. He's a navigator. He's my aviator. He's my covenant holder. He's a burden bearer. He's a low serum. Look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor I've come to the conclusion that all of these years he's been keeping me I am blessed and for my blessing it's not just for me but it's for you too I speak blessings over your life over your children over your marriage over your businesses household bless finance bless you walk bless your talk is bless your dog is bless your cat is bless your fish is bless your bird is bless your turtle is bless your rabbit is bless your yard is bless your car is bless 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 But you gotta trust God. You gotta trust Him in everything that you do. Trust Him. I don't care what it looks like. Trust God. Door to the Lord's house. It's open. We offer Christ to you. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, today, says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Come. You lost your way. That's okay. All have sinned. Come short. We fall down, but we get up. Because the saint is just a sinner that fell down and got up again. You want to be a part of this body of believers? If you need prayer today, come. Come to this home. Bring it all to the altar. That's what we 
offer you. We offer Christ to you. Come now, God, thanking you for what has been said on here today, God. We come with our hearts and with our minds, God, stayed and dependent on you, Lord God. God, we've discovered through this message, God, that you are our source. God, you are our peace and you are our joy. And despite all that we're feeling right now, God, you're yet still in control. So, God, whatever's going on right now, God, we ask, God, that you be in the midst of this situation, Lord God. We ask, God, that we take the the words, God, that have been said here, the words that have been preached here, God, from the book of Joshua, Lord God. That we would receive, God, first and foremost. And then, God, that we would rehearse, Lord God. And then at some point, God, we would start running, God, according to what you said, Lord God. Run with authority, Lord God. Run with the mindset of a conqueror, Lord God. And run, God, with a dominating spirit, Lord God. That we would stand according to your power and to your word. And that in the midst of all that we're going through, God, that you are yet sitting on the throne, God. And that you are the Alpha and the Omega, God. You're the beginning and the end, and nothing goes through your hands, God, unless you authorize it. So, God, we're standing right now, God. We're lifting up our dear sister, God, but not only her, Lord God. We're lifting up those that are standing to her left and to her right. We're we're, we're, we're lifting up those that are sitting in the pews, God. That though they may have something going on, God, 
They're still trusting and believing you, Lord God, right now. So God, whatever they stand in need of, God, you know. Whatever they're standing in need of, God, you meet them, God, according to your purpose and according to your will. Let them know, God, that nothing that you put them through, God, can fail. Nothing, God, that they are experiencing, God, can overtake them, Lord God. That they're more than a conqueror, Lord God, right now. And, God, that they know that no weapon formed against them, God, shall ever prosper, God. It shouldn't overtake them, Lord God. Why, God? Because you're yet in the midst of everything, God, that we stand in need of, God. So, God, we lift up the dreams of your people, God. We lift up the hearts of your people, God. We lift up, God, everything that you spoke to them, Lord God, that it shall come to pass, Lord God. Remind them, God, of who you are, God. Remind them, God, of how you called them, Lord God. Remind them, God, that you're yet God and you cannot and you will not fail, God, concerning their situations. So, God, we ask that you comfort right now. Give them a peace that passes all understanding, God. Allow them to make their requests known unto you, Lord God. Let them come with a boldness, Lord God, like never before, God. And that it would be mindful, God, that you are yet still in charge. So, God, we ask that you bring your promises to pass, God. Continue to give them a glimpse, God, of what you said and who you are. Let them know, God, that whatever door that you've opened, God, no man can close it, God. And, God, whatever door you have closed to the past, God, no man can open it, Lord God. That they may stand according, God, to your power and to your purpose and your presence in their lives. God, we thank you. We thank you for our pastor, Lord God. Ask God that you would pour back into him, God, what he has poured out to us, Lord God. Bless him right now, God. Continue to give him what he stands in need of, Lord God. We pray, God, that this church, the One Way Baptist Church, Lord God, sitting on Harry Man Road, Lord God, would be ever mindful and careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, God. And with that, God, we say we thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and we ask it all, and we say amen. God bless you this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Cotton is coming with our announcements. Thank you, Pastor Bull. Thank you, Pastor Bull, for that amazing word. We're excited for next week. <laughs> Thank you for blessing us today. Um, will our first time visitors please stand for words of welcome? Well, we're all family. Amen. Please be sure to visit our website, our Facebook, and YouTube pages for the weekly announcements. And our thought for the week, count your blessings, not your bitterness. It's better to lose count naming your blessings than to lose your blessings by counting your troubles. Right. Have a blessed week. And all the people of God said amen. Were you blessed by the word on today? I pray that it bless you.
offer you received what God had for you in the Word. Take it and apply it to your everyday living. Amen? Good to see everybody here. Let me make these few observations and we'll go from this place. Please keep all of OWBC family members and friends in your prayers. Keep Sister Alma Lee, mother, and her family in your prayers. Amen? Amen. Mother Harrison in your prayers. Deacon Medlock in your prayers. Amen. And others in OWBC family. Amen. Those that have lost loved ones and are bereaved, keep them in your prayer. Some Someone that's having a procedure done or have had a procedure done, please know that we are praying for you. Please don't forget to go and check out the announcements on our Facebook, YouTube page. Let's give Sister Jayla Demery a good God bless you. She did an outstanding job. She ain't in the day. That's all right. Maybe she'll go back and look at it. She know we, we clapped for her. Amen. Also give Sister Jay. She always gives us informative information. And Deacon Jones always does what Deacon Jones always does. And we thank him so much, Sister Watkins as well. Um, now, let me ask you, did you all enjoy that special anniversary announcement from your pastor? Praise the Lord. Ministry leaders, if you, have, if you haven't scheduled your meeting with the pastor, please contact the church office. This week, to schedule your 30-minute meeting. Now, your meeting doesn't necessarily have to be this week. It just needs to be scheduled. Okay, you can make it for whenever, but just schedule it. Also, ministry leaders mark your calendars. September the 12th at 6.45 for our ministry leaders meeting. All right? Again, we mentioned to you about the church anniversary being on October the 16th. I am asking each member to contribute $126 in addition, somebody say in addition, in addition. to your tithe, offering, and step up. I didn't get no amen right there. Amen. Now, if you did not get the information on last week, let me reiterate right quick. Last week, you had eight weeks to contribute your $126. And if you began last week, all you had to put aside was $15.75. Each week, and by October 16th, you would have your $126 and still be able to give your tithe, offering, and step up for that Sunday. Amen? Amen. However, you only have seven weeks now. Now you have to set aside $18 a week <laughs> in order to contribute your $126. Somebody say aside, aside. your tithe, aside. offering, aside. and step up. Amen. I mean, you get the picture? You got the picture. Amen. 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 Don't forget Wednesday night, 630, I have to COVID facts Bible study. I look forward to seeing you all here. I will put out a PSA on tomorrow if the Lord says the same. So be on the lookout on Facebook and YouTube. Amen? Amen. I love you and I'm praying for you. Amen. Likewise, you do the same. Please continue to remain safe and be careful. Have a phenomenal week. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Please stand. As we worship God through the giving of our tithes and our offering. Amen? Can God trust you to trust him even with your finances? Better yet, your substance? Why do we give? How do we give? When do we give?
Where do we give? To whom do we give? Together, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6 and 38. Please repeat after me. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Look at your neighbor and tell him, we have heard the word of God. Also, please keep Deacon Campbell, thank y'all, in your prayers. I had it in my head, it just hadn't made it to my lips. God, how we thank you, praise you, and bless you for what has transpired on the day. Thank you for your spirit in this place. Thank you for your spirit in our hearts and our minds. Thank you for your spirit in our hands and our feet. Thank you for your Holy Spirit being with us today, dear God. And God, I pray that you would bless you. the tithe, the offering, the step up that it be used for the ongoing of thy kingdom work here at OWBC. Bless those that give in, dear God. Return it unto them in a hundredfold, dear God. Increase the faith of those that have yet to trust you with all of their substance, dear God. And I want to thank you to God for your word and take it and hide it in our hearts that we know how to get our blessing and be successful. We love you for your word and pray to God that we share with the dying world that Jesus lives for he lives within our soul. Dismiss us from this place but never from your presence. God, we ask it all. Now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and tell him, Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. watching. For more information about the One Way Baptist Church, 
please visit our website at www.onewaybaptistchurch.com.